Welcome to Live on Purpose Radio with Dr. Paul Jenkins, where you will hear inspiring stories of ordinary people doing extraordinary things. Feed your mind with a regular dose of positive energy and show up for your life every day on purpose. Living on purpose means that you have a purpose and you do it intentionally. And now, here's your host, Dr. Paul. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Live on Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life, promoting pathological positivity today at Live on Purpose Radio. My phenomenal guest today is a best selling author, a leadership coach, primarily self leadership, but also spontaneous leadership, and some other fun things that we might get into today. He is a speaker, a presenter. His name? Kevin Ormond. Welcome, Kevin. Welcome, Paul. Thanks. I'm glad to have you here today. I'm glad to be here. So you're all of those things that I mentioned and more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm six foot two. Let's see what else. <laughs> what else? There's all, the, yeah, all kinds the of stuff. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into the weight, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always thought it was funny when people announce that a new baby is born. Uh-huh. They have to give all of the vital stats, like the length and the weight and everything. What if we started doing that at every networking event? That would be a fun thing to do. It would be scary for some people. Fun for some, not so fun for others. That's right. right. Well, you, you know, that's one way to break through the barriers. Well, and we're not necessarily here today to change that particular tradition, but I think we can get some fun things done. Kevin, you authored a book called Me, Inc. Your Life is Your Business. That's right. And that's the one that made the uh, bestseller list? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hit number three on Amazon with that, so I'm in the top ten. And you've stayed on the bestseller list for um, a number of weeks yeah, now. Yeah, since I hit it, which was January 27th, and I'm still on the bestseller list. Uh, earlier this week, nice. uh, when I looked, I was at number nine. And for those of you who need a little date reference, we are recording this show in mid-April 2015. <sighs> Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. You are an expert in projects. Among other things. Yes, that's one of the things I am. Well, I, I mentioned that because you were telling me just before the show how you pulled off this book. Yeah. Well, you know what happened is I had uh, I'd had cancer and some things. I'd been sick for several years. I have. That's just very incidental, yeah. by the way. He yeah. had cancer and yeah. major surgeries. Well, you know, it's, it's a little speed bumps. Well, in the life road, happens to you, doesn't it? You know, funny how that works. Hmm. And uh, but I'd had that and a few other things. I'd ended up having um, I've had three, four major surgeries in the last three and a half years. And yeah. Uh, so, you know, I had, I had some odds and ends. Gives you time to think, <laughs> which yeah. is kind of good. Gives you time to reassess. Well, One of to think differently, too, huh? Uh, oh, yeah. There, there's something that you can't describe about the feeling of the doctor coming in and saying, kid, you got something that's going to make you die. This is really it's kill you. serious. If you don't do something about this, you're going to die. Mm. And uh, only those who have had that experience can understand the feeling. It right. is... Uh, it is um, uh, just, I don't even know how to describe it. Uh, but those who've been there <laughs> know exactly I what I'm talking about. I'm, a, I'm about 25 years post-diagnosis myself. Yeah, well, you know what I'm talking about. And it's, yeah. But to describe it, it's almost like trying to describe the taste of salt to somebody that's never tasted it. It's just, it's hard to do. Yeah. But anyway, I started feeling good. And so, uh, finally, <laughs> so... This uh, was a little later. Yeah, this is about a year ago. Yeah. And I... Uh, uh, decided to to move things to the next level with my with my business and and uh, my mm. career. So part of that was um, um, friends of mine that I mentored with and stuff said you got to write a book. I mean that's just part of the deal. Well over the years I probably started twenty, but I actually finished this one. And uh-huh. what happened was that I made that decision in about um, oh mid May or so. A hundred mm-hmm. days later, I had I was on Kindle. I was uh, uh, on paperback in Amazon, and I had 100 copies in my hand. Wait, wait, wait. This doesn't happen, Kevin. Yes, it did. Oh, my heavens. So you and had I've an never idea. written a book before. I want to have a book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My life lacks a book. I want a completed book. Uh-huh. 100 days later, there it was. It there manifested it was. as a real thing. There it was, and I had 100 copies in my hand. Mm. And I did that little project. Um, my hard costs were $632.46, and that included 100 copies in my hand. Hold on. 
Okay, so I know that we have listeners. A lot of our listeners are business owners, uh-huh. entrepreneurs. They uh-huh. have they have home based businesses or whatever. Yeah. So you're saying that if someone in our listener base today, yeah, has this thought, hey, I would like to have a book, but it's going to take forever. It's too expensive. You're giving us a real example here that no, that's not necessarily true. Not in this day and age. It used to be true prior to the internet, prior to things like Amazon, um, prior to things like Create Space, which is mm-hmm. uh, is owned by Amazon, and uh, that used to be true, but it's not true today. That's one of the things that technology right. has done is it has tremendously changed uh, publishing books, which makes that an available option to anyone. That's right. Who gets the idea in their head like you did. Yeah. Hey, I want to have a book. Well, it helps if you know how to put a project together. Because I'd never done it before. I didn't know all the details and things like that. But yeah. I, I have, uh, I'm an expert with projects. And so one of the things that I did was I was able to put together a team and make this thing happen. And mm. uh, you can't do it by yourself. And but you shouldn't. No. But even with the team and all the costs, uh, that still was my hard cost number, the one I gave you. So, um, uh, But again, wow. that's, that's because... It wasn't my first rodeo with a, mm-hmm. with a project. With it a project. W- it was with a project to write a book, mm-hmm. but it wasn't with a project. You've found, I'm sure, that there are underlying principles that govern everything. Absolutely. So you've applied those principles to create a book in a very short timeline. That's right. But those same principles could be applied to any aspect of your life. Well, and that's really what the book is about, is I took yes. those principles and I, uh, I just simply said, you know what, here's the problem. People spend, typically, most people, spend more time uh, planning a vacation <laughs> than they do planning their life. And it's like... That is really true. Yeah, and you wonder, you wonder why you don't get any, uh, anything done. You wonder why it doesn't work. You wonder why it doesn't get accomplished. You don't understand why... And the reason is because you aren't applying the principles that make it work. So the same principles that make a successful vacation could be applied to planning your life. Or writing a book. Or whatever it is that's on your agenda. Or whatever it is that's on your agenda. You had a little wake-up call. Uh, Several big wake-up calls, didn't you? I've had a number of them over the years, yes. Including potentially life-threatening or even life-terminating diagnoses. Yeah. Uh, these yeah, I was diagnosed with, you... with prostate cancer. Oh, wow, uh, yeah. Um, what, uh, a little over four years ago I was diagnosed. Well, one of our recent show guests actually trekked to the South Pole to raise awareness for that particular issue. Right. Um these things happen. They do. And we mentioned that earlier. Life is what happens to you while you're making other plans. (laughs) (laughs) You know what, Kevin? That is so funny because one of the chapters in my book is titled Surprise. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) And it's expect it, Uh, folks. Expect to be surprised. Oh, yeah. No question. It's going to happen. And um, and so one of the one of the key elements in whatever you do is to, is to it, it sounds like an oxymoron, but you have mm-hmm. to structure in flexibility. Uh, okay, that's like expecting to be surprised. Yeah, but, but again, again, it, if, if it's not done on purpose, if it's not done with some sort of forethought and mm-hmm. some sort of, of, of a way to handle it, you know, it can really knock you out. It can, it can throw you for a loop. Yes, I think that's partially because life tends to hand us things that are urgent but not necessarily important. No kidding. And so that consumes our time and energy Yeah, where we end up sacrificing things of greater value. You know, Stephen Covey talked about that um, uh, with Mm. his four quadrants, and, and, um, and the key is really spending most time in quadrant two, but that's hard to do. And that quadrant two is the things that are important but not urgent. And mm-hmm. that's where that's where leverage exists. That's where value is created. That's where where things can really uh, change in your life and come together is by is by focusing on those quadrant two elements. Important but not urgent. Things like exercise, for example, mm-hmm. not necessarily urgent, but is absolutely important. That's what you're talking about. That and um, probably even more directly relationships. Mm. Um, you know, building and, and creating re- relationships. Um, right. You know, they, um, 
I saw a great quote the other day that said that uh, uh, children require our presence, not mm. presence. Ah, nice. You know? And so uh, it's not what you buy for them. It's, it's that you're there with them. That and you're present in their life. Yeah, and, and, and th the beauty of that little thing is that that applies to all children, no matter how old they are. It uh, applies to a child of age 100 as much as it does to a child of, uh, of a month. Yeah. Uh, these wake-up calls that you had, Kevin, it, it, it adds perspective, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is, am I going to feel good when they put me in my grave that I accomplished this or I accumulated that? Are you going to die with your music still in you? Yeah. And... Uh, and mm. and that's part of part of what really precipitated this this um, launching and going where I'm going now mm -hmm. uh, is I've got a lot of experience I've got a lot of things that I can add to the world, and yeah. um, I've got a lot of music still inside me. I'm just a kid, okay, mm -hmm. and um, you know I'm well I'm younger than Harlan Sanders was when he started Kentucky Fried Chicken, so you know not a lot but it's some. <laughs> 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 Hang on to that. Hang on to that. And so the, the bottom line is that, uh, that it really becomes critical that we go ahead and, and, and do that and say, you know what, I am not going to go quietly into the night and I'm not going to die with my music still in me if I can do anything about it. So it starts with that resolution. It does. It's a decision, just like so many other decisions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, the power of decision is so far-reaching and so profound. Mm. You know, there, the, the thing that happens is a decision that is truly made, not kind of waffly made, but actually mm -hmm. heartfelt made. More of a resolution. Uh, really, yeah. yeah. A declaration. It, uh, well, even, you know, if you could be more powerful, I would be. Yeah. Yeah, it it's just has to be part, you have to incorporate it to be part of your being. The mm. decision has to become part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And then from there, principles. Yeah. Applying the principles to actually bring that into That's right. reality. That's right. And of course, sometimes the first principle is I got to learn the principles. <laughs> if you don't know what they are, you might want to find out. Yeah, well, it might be helpful, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, that's, that's, and that's where I found myself at one point, mm -hmm. you know, a number of years ago uh, with a different wake-up call. It's just another mm -hmm. story that we have time mm -hmm. for. But the point is that I made that decision then that there are some things here that I have got to do differently, mm -hmm. okay? And... Um, uh, one of those was uh, was a divorce, and uh, mm. and uh, I remarried, and now we've been married almost 37 years. So oh, wow. I I uh, I actually I actually um, improved. Mm -hmm. I actually learned some things, and then incorporated oh, them into my life, and they actually work. I you tell know? you what. And now I'm married to my very best friend. Nice. And it's almost 37 years later, and we're saying. Geez, I still feel like a kid. We feel like we've just been married mm -hmm. in some ways, you know, and she's I, great. I was just thinking, as you said that, Kevin, some of life's experiences, life's lessons uh -huh. are so expensive. Oh, oh man. You better darn well take home the lesson if you're going to be paying that kind of tuition. Totally. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that you can learn from your experience. Well, and let me tell you something that I learned. I got some bad advice from my dad. He, he, uh. said, uh, he said divorce is financial suicide, and I believed it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so I struggled with my career for a number of years before mm -hmm. I finally caught on to the fact that that was just a line of much of nonsense. And it was a story. It's a you didn't story. Have to believe it. It's his story that he believed. And because mm -hmm. I heard it from my dad, I believed it for a while. And just because we believe a story doesn't mean that it's true. Not at all. No. No. Ah. No. That's uh, what are we talking about there? Confirmation bias and a few other things. Oh, all kinds of psychological principles. All given. kinds of nonsense. Frozen evaluations. Oh, fun boy. stuff. Well, we're on to it. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you for listening to Live on Purpose Radio. We're so glad to have you here. Please come by the website, drpauljenkins.com, spelled with a D-R, 
drpauljenkins.com. On the website, you'll have an opportunity to receive a free download. And while you're there, make sure you click on the social media icons. Come over to Facebook, where we will be posting these episodes as well as our YouTube videos and other content and announcements for you to share. Please like us, comment, subscribe, join the conversation. We're happy to have you with us here at Live On Purpose Radio. Let's all support each other to live on purpose. DrPaulJenkins.com Hi, my name is Chris Crone, and thank you for listening to Live On Purpose Radio. I became financially independent, starting from nothing, by the age of 26. My purpose is to financially liberate the captive. Are you searching for a realistic, proven system in real estate to create enough residual income to retire or fund your dreams? I invite you to learn about a passive, turnkey, proven system and approach to real estate where my team of 200 experts can do all the heavy lifting to create the freedom you're searching for. Visit www.liveonpurpose.strongbrook.com to get a free copy of my book, The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth. Just enter the code FREE at www.liveonpurpose.strongbrook.com. Success and failure. We think of them as opposites, but they're really not. They're companions, the hero and the sidekick. Lawrence Shames. Kevin Ormond today at Live On Purpose Radio. And Kevin, we were talking during the break about how if people Google your name, they're going to find you easily if they, they can spell it. They spell it correctly. That's right. I am the only person on the planet with those two names spelled this way. And I'm going to spell them for you now. Kevin is spelled with a C. It's C-E-V-I-N. Ormond is just like Osmond, only with an R instead of an S. So it's O R M O N D. And uh, okay, yeah. And if you Google those two names, you've got to go. Last time I looked, clear to the bottom of page seven to find somebody that's Before not you find somebody me. else. Yeah. So that's the best way to find you. It is online at least. Well, yeah. Or, or uh, of course, again, if you can spell it, KevinOrman.com. Well, we'll mention that again at the end of the show. Sure. Um, just spell it with a C, folks. You'll find it That's a lot it. easier. Yep. Make sure and add the D on the end. A lot of people forget that one, too. Kevin, it, it occurred to me as we were having this conversation today that maybe some things are possible that I didn't think were possible before. It was just all the stories that were in my head. Sure. You're publishing a book, for example, in 100 days. Yeah. And not just publishing it, but having a physical copy in your hand yeah. in that time period yeah. from from the idea to the completion. Right. That opens up some possibilities. What else? If you're listening to this podcast, what else could possibly be on the table for you that you didn't realize was before? Yeah. Let's open up that possibility. Just consider maybe there's another story out there that says yes. This is possible sure. and available to you. Oh, absolutely. There are all kinds of things that are available. The power of making a decision is so profound. But again, you have to mm -hmm. really, it has to become part of who you are. You really have to make the decision with all your heart. And, yes. And, and that's, uh, anything else is, uh, it still stays within the realm of a wish. And, uh, right. you know, and, uh, you know, if you want to wish on a star, that's great. But it, but I would rather make that covenant, that commitment, that, that, that part uh, change who I am. Really. So instead of wishing and hoping we're declaring and doing, we we're are making a firm decision, getting clear in your mind about what you want to create. Yeah. And it's okay if you don't know how it, no question. And the other thing that comes to mind is, is an understanding of what risk is. You see the risk is in mm. not doing it and not that's making one that, of the risks that yes. is you know the 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 um, people say oh it's too risky to do this or that or the other it's uh, the reality is that the very with very few exceptions most things are riskier to not do long term 
And, yeah. and that's the key. The key is understanding that true risk is a long-term thing, not a short-term thing. Bad decisions are made with short-term thinking. Yes. And good decisions are made with long-term thinking, taking the short-term into account. And, and not taking all of the proper variables into account. Well, that happens anyway, and you can't yeah. predict them all because life is right. going to happen to you. But, but, uh, but to the extent that you can, the ones that you can predict, the ones you can plan for, you should. Take it on. Yeah. So let's get practical. Yeah. Um, I, I'm feeling inspired, Kevin. Are you? <laughs> yes. Cool. <laughs> That's why I do this show. Well, that's great. I, I'm inspired to be I, here with you, too. I get to hang out with amazing people like Kevin Orman <laughs> and feel inspired to take on my next project. Well, that's kind I, of you. I've got a few yeah. that well, are that's coming it. up. But yeah. I, even as you're talking, I'm thinking, okay, well, what story do I have about this? Or what yes. story do I have about that? Yeah. So I'm, I'm wrapping my mind around that. And I'm also going to the next step. What are the next practical steps that I can take or that any of our listeners could take? What comes to mind for you? You've coached well, people yeah, through this. You before. know, there's a couple of things. First of all, while you were talking, one thing that popped into my head is this. Um, sometimes the stories are about big. This is too big or whatever. Sometimes mm. the stories that we have are about small. I'm too small. Well, if you know it's big and small, that's BS. And, <laughs> and so the, uh, <laughs> okay. the, thing, the thing about that is to understand that that's what most of these stories are, is their BS. And the reality is that, that we need to recognize that they're just simply a story, a fairy right. tale, you know, and, and they're not the truth. Mm -hmm. And so part of it uh, comes in recognizing your stories and realizing what it is that's holding you back. Now, okay. to, to, to move that into something that's a little more practical, what, what in my book I've done is I've taken, uh, you know, six areas of your life and uh, just broken your life down into six in six segments, uh, you know, career and um, and family and health. Uh, yeah, health and spirituality and so right. on. Right. All these different areas. And um, the key is to harmonize. You know, you had Dan Clark on here before. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Dan has actually uh, endorsed my book, which is kind of cool. You can read that in the book when you buy yeah. it. But uh, <laughs> the, the point is that Dan talks about harmony. And uh, harmony really is about making all the areas of your life play together into the symphony that is your unique tune. Nobody else on the planet has mm. your tune. Okay. So it doesn't have to match any of the existing prototypes. Totally. And, and, and it shouldn't, actually. It, it, can't, it can't anyway. I made ah. that mistake early on in my speaking car career, trying to emulate others mm -hmm. that were successful speakers and I face planted boom like this yeah. it was terrible I got fired <laughs> it was really fun <laughs> and coming back on the plane from New York City which is a tough market that's where this happened uh, uh, I was sitting next to a guy who was going to do summer stock and he gave me out in Oregon uh, he gave me he's an actor he gave me all these ideas about how to how to present properly because it's so much like acting in some ways yeah. And and, uh, and uh, that was one of the most valuable um, mistakes or lessons that I ever mm. received was on that three hour flight from New York to Denver one time. And it's OK to face plant. It is OK to face plant if painful you learn the lesson. Otherwise, exactly. you're going to get to do it again until you do learn the lesson. And that's and that's the thing. Now, back to the practical a little bit more. You know, first mm. of all, you have to determine where you are. And so part of that is understanding what those stories are that are holding you back. Part okay. of that is, 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 is a hard, honest look at your reality, not the story you present or tell everybody. Right. But what it really is. This is uh, the Stockdale paradox, right? Uh, Admiral Stockdale, and it's about, um, he was a prisoner of war during Vietnam for oh. years. And mm -hmm. he, uh, he talked about this. It's in Jim Collins' book, Good, Good to Great. He talks about oh it. But, yeah. but the... Um, the Stockdale paradox is simply that you've got to be brutally honest and still have hope. Yeah. Okay. And so you've got to be you've got to be honest about the the 
the the reality of your about what is what about is where you are. where you are and so uh, what I actually uh, decided to do in my book is I incorporated at the end of each of those sections a little worksheet and, and in that little worksheet we start out with where you are mm -hmm. okay and where you are in the various elements of of your life and so really there is no better place to start well there is no other place to start anything else is an illusion it's not even possible of course it's not you can't start from anywhere else I can't start from yesterday I can't start from tomorrow so you're saying it's okay to acknowledge that not only okay but it's essential it's essential to acknowledge and it embrace is. that this it is. is where I am and that's okay yeah it is well embrace it in the mm. sense embrace it in the sense that um, it's just being real. It's real, yeah. but not embrace it in the sense of this is the way it's always going to, going to be, and I'm okay with that, and I just have to endure to the end and die right. die with my music still in me. That is not okay, and and so what you have to do is embrace the reality because you got to know where your starting point is, and yeah. then you got to determine where you want to be. And so in the little worksheet, it's where I am, and then it's where I want to be. And you just work your way through that process and say, where do I want to be in this aspect in this area? Where do I want to be in that aspect in that area? And, um, and actually work, work it out. Now, um, I'm of the age that I'm still pen and paper with that, with that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I, I mean, I, I do it online, I, all those kinds of things, and I can do it on a spreadsheet. But there is something about, because uh, I'm a strong kinesthetic learner, so for me, there's something about actually writing, scribing it actually the, scribing it onto a paper, paper that plants it into my my being better, mm -hmm. into my mind and into my heart better, uh, and and so I would recommend that everybody try it just because sometimes that's the case that you try it with pen and paper, mm -hmm. uh, just just try it that way, and um, but you don't have to, if it doesn't if you're if you're you're really really comfortable not doing it that way it's fine yeah but do sure. it. And that's the real key. You got to do something like that. So the essential element here, or the principles underlying this, if if we're going to travel a journey, in in thinking of it as a journey, sure. perhaps think about your vacation. You got to have your your start point and your mm -hmm. end point. Mm -hmm. Have those clearly in mind, and then you can map out a course between the two, which is enormously difficult to do if you don't know what those endpoints are. Well, yeah, and and the other thing that happens is that when life happens on the way. You mm -hmm. change what's happening right where you are. Mm -hmm. So if there's an obstacle, you have to go over it, under it, around it somehow, mm -hmm. uh, through it if necessary. But um, you don't change the end point. You don't change where you're going. And right. so um, uh, one guy, uh, a friend of mine told me one time, he says, you make your goals in concrete and your plans in sand. Mm. And I thought about that, and that's wonderful because, because that means that I can change, move the sand around if I have to. Uh, yeah. If I see a better way to get to the end point or whatever. Or if you get blown off course a little bit. It happens. You still know how to get oriented toward, okay, where was I going again? Sure. And it may be a little different vector, a little different direction than you were sure. going before, but still toward the same end Well, goal. and the fascinating thing about that is when you're doing that, uh, you know, call it divine intervention, call it the universe, call it whatever you're comfortable with. But what it does is it gives you it gives you a um, an, an inspiration. You actually, when you get blown off course, you actually pick up ideas and skills that mm -hmm. actually will get you there. See, our idea is a direct uh, line, and the reality is that it always follows the law of the indirect. Hmm. And the law of the indirect. That's right. And so we want to go from A to B. You know, I was taught in geometry, that's the shortest distance, blah, 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 between mm. two points. The reality is that the shortest distance, when you look at the big picture, is never a straight line. It's a zigzag. It's always, it's up and down and sideways, it's over around, or sometimes it loops, it's... You know, <laughs> yeah. So when you notice that your life is doing this, you're not doing it wrong. No, not at all. And welcome to Earth. Yeah, welcome to planet Earth. Yeah, and that's and that's really what happens. So we have to make sure that we still keep that endpoint in mind, and we still then move toward those things. Yes, that's enormously helpful, Kevin. Thank you. You bet. For that. Now your book is called Me Inc. M E comma I N C period. Right. Subtitle: Your life is your business. That's right. Available on Amazon, on Kindle. Right. 
Um, your name is spelled C E V I N O R M O N D. That's correct. And there's a dot com for that. There is. That's my website. Is Kevin. that the way you prefer that people get a hold of you? That's one way. Okay. Um, they can also uh, just, again, Kevin at kevinorman.com. That's the email address. That's the email address. And yep. both of those Kevins are spelt with a C. That's right. Now, if you can't right. spell it with a C, okay, uh, <laughs> you can, you can, uh, uh, you can go. You can send me an email at Kevin at Kevin with a C. So it's the K E V I N with a C dot com. I own that one too. Oh, so <laughs> I think I'll just remember how to spell your name. That's but easier for that's, me. That's a lot easier. We'll but it, but uh, but that's for the people that can't spell. And we'll so, put up a link on the blog site as yeah, well. Yeah, do that. Do that. So it is possible. There are steps to get there and principles. It's there are. It's time to take whatever that idea is and go live on purpose by taking it on. That's right. Kevin, you've got about 10 seconds to have the last word here. Well, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to uh, work with people and be, uh, speak and speak. That's what I do, among other things, coach and all those things. But the bottom line is do something. It doesn't happen without action. Do something.